in this tutorial I will show you how to darn point shoes nice and neat. We will need darning thread. I'm going to use both of these needles. One is a curvy one and one is a one with a bigger eye, straight one. A little pliers to help me from time to time to pull and push the needle through and scissors. Let's start! So here you can see that there is a natural curve and roughly where these two pleats are going this is the end where we are going to work and then as we go in rounds naturally we will have this curve. Some people say you need to put it pointed like that and then with a little pencil draw around. If you would like, go ahead and do it. You can just put little uh, marks here. I don't. I just follow these edges and then go around and it is a perfect. Um, you can see it how it stands. So what we'll need is cut a long thread. If, if your thread is little uh, less, you may need to change it more often, but it's not a problem. I will show you what I normally do when I do some um, embroidery work. I will implement it here as well. So this is how long it is. Quite a long thread. And I will double it. So we work with double the thread. And then I want you to have another double thread and we will double it again and I'll show you why I need it and where we'll put it. This one doesn't need to be so long, but again, it needs to go all over whatever we are working, so you can make it a little bit longer. So roughly, if these are the edges we are going to work, we need to make sure that we do the middle. So if we say that the middle will be these two pleats, so this is where we are going to work a chain. So if you say here and here, we'll have a chain stitch and it will be in the middle. And then we have roughly the same distance up and down and here on the side to complete it. So a little bit the short, the shorter thread we will put in the middle and we'll keep going with it. So first of all, I will start with the curvy needle and I want you to leave so thread it like that, but we are going to use the thread where it's cut and we will leave the folded end. And I'll show you later on why I did it like that. So we've marked, we are starting somewhere here, and somewhere there. And we want to work with the needle Let's see, here, there it's good. We go in and try and get the satin. 
and if we will do a certain length we will make it like that so here's where I'll get this too and it's much easier So at the beginning it may go a little bit like that, but then okay, let me get this one away. Be careful when we start and after that everything will be secured. So we'll work nicer. So now when we go and do the chain, we are trying to work these two threads in between. So we go in. We go the first, so this will be actually the first. Chain. And hold the edges so we don't pull them through. So we cross it over. Sorry, this should go this way. So always move your thread over. It's a little bit fiddly to start off with, but then. So this is our first chain. We'll keep this in place. And now we put this thread over and we will go and do the second chain. So we will work here is the second chain so roughly we need to do them the same but it doesn't matter Oops, so did you see I've missed this one, but it's okay. We just need to push it, the needle in here. This is what creates the chain. Here is the chain. So this is like a funda foundational chain. Oops. We'll cut this later on, but for now, let's keep it there. So I made these four chains. We just go here. So the, if the shoes are new, they may be a little bit stiffer, like this one, so brand new. So we go here and go a little bit. This 
this is just to secure the chain stitch Okay, so this is nice and straight. So we will work. We will start our first round in a moment. Let me just straighten the the thread. So now we are starting our first round, and we are going to work in this chains so leave these two in the middle in and just work these two cotton so what you do we want to work this other loose cotton around So we can start here from the first chain. We go above, well, I don't want to, uh, to use crochet terms, but this is one of the loops. So if we go through the top row uh, loops and just into the satin, and secure it then I want to turn this these two threads and just keep them here so what we'll do now every time we go into these loops we will go underneath get the thread so this is the thread we're working so put it up here and put your finger there and here when we are in the corner we are going to do two blanket stitches in each corner this is to increase when we go up so when you do this we want this thread behind and this here Can see how you create the blanket stitch so then we go to this back loops again so if we say that this is one from the corner and don't worry uh, this will forgive you even if you make a mistake one was the corner so i'll do two in this first stitch first Okay, can you see now we've worked two stitches in the first chain. Now we'll go to the second chain. Keep this finger there. Go under. Grab some of the satin under these two. This always need to go over this side. Keep this door away because now it got... Okay, that's fine. This happens because I do put a little bit longer thread, but I prefer it longer. From time to time we need to make sure it is nice and straight and now we go and do the second stitch
and you will get used when you start making the first row then you'll get used to the rest for these new shoes it's much easier to use the pliers to pull them now did you see what happened I didn't put the thread around but if it happens just push it through and it will sort itself if you remember to pull it all on one side it is a little bit time consuming but i like them nice and um neat especially if you have an expensive point shoes you don't want just to do it anyhow So we've done one, two. So we've done one in this one, one in this one. The reason I do two in each stitch is because I don't want them to have a big gap. And somehow I manage. Did I do two? I managed to add a stitch somewhere else, but it doesn't matter. We just need to make it the same thing on the other side. So this is the corner one. And we will do two stitches here as well So we've done two from this end before we continue we will done we will do actually let's cut these two edges I like working in a make it nice and tidy and just cut it when I don't need it so now because we are in the corner we're going to do two more stitches just going around and coming back from the other side so we go there and this is the two thread which goes around so it can go this way and this is the one we are working with now we 
still do one more in this stitch. Just cut this thread. And here we come back and do one more. So you will find, as I said, new shoes will be a little bit stiffer. So now we continue with these two. We'll do two more blanket, st blanket stitch. And um, chain next to it. So we're just working into the chains. And when you feel uh, I will need another two in the corner. Just go ahead and do them as long as they are not too many. But I would normally put two at each edge. But I'll show you. So make sure both of these are nice and tighten. So we are coming to this chain stitch and we will do two in I try also with the straight one and I find the straight one the straight needle is a little bit more difficult here than the curve Needle. Uh, okay, can you see we didn't go through, so it's not a problem, just push it through here. the last one you just need a little bit patience to do it and I'm sure that everyone will be able to do it So we've done one round so now I will continue going around I will show you here I will do an, another increase as we need to keep nice and so we will go into the same stitch here but because it's a corner stitch we'll increase it and we'll do two more And this um, thread just goes around and the reason I'm putting it so it is nice and um, fill the gaps
And now here we are going to do this is the edge can you see now so we kind of finish so we can put this one into here and create two more stitches as it is the other corner one and two you don't need to count stitches if you do one more one less it is very forgiving i'm just so now we are starting the second round and in the second round we are going to work in you know, all these stitches we've taken the tops can you see it we are going to work in all of this so the same thing grab the satin underneath underneath these two and then bring this around and we'll just do this around and around and now we are not going to do two in each we are just going to do one blanket stitch in each stitch we've done the reason we did two the first round is to make it a little bit more the stitches tied to each other rather than having a big gap so now we go here We keep going around. So now when we come to this corner, we will do two. And then we'll go one, one, and in this corner we'll do two. So we can open up for the next corner. And then we'll continue. I will speed up now. And I will meet you when we need to change um, or to make it longer. Uh, the thread and I'll show you what, what I'll do. So when you reach rough, roughly this length and you feel that it's more difficult to work with this is now the time to add more of the thread and the reason I left the joining bit when we folded it is that we can use this one and we'll cut another big thread as we still have to do one more round of here and here and then we'll start to do the, the back the underneath so we will still need plenty of um, thread but don't worry if we need to replace it we will just do a nice big long thread and this one we will fold in two i'm not measuring it just you decide what you want and now we'll put it through here and this is how we add new thread without having to do knots here i i do not use knots as you notice um but then i'll show you later on how to finish it off so now we have two ends and they are cut so once we finish this thread we will have to start another one as we cannot connect it here but at least for one extension mm -hmm. We don't need to worry that or we don't need to start it afresh okay so this is the trick here can you see this little where we have added it 
Okay, now we'll continue speeding up and I will meet you here at the end. Oh, so what I want, actually, I will meet you here and I, I will uh, show you what I do here in this corner and then we'll do the same in this corner, but I'll meet you. I'll do this one in a, as a speed and then I'll meet you at this bottom corner. Okay, so now you can see this is the edge we were going to work and this is how we're finishing it. So we finish this end. Look how lovely it is. So what I wanted to show you, now we need to do one more row and when we do, let me show you. So instead of, we will still go around and then straight, but can you see there is a little, um, so if we go around, it is a, a oval shape, but from here we will start working in rows. So for now we've been working in rounds. So for this corner and this edge corner, what I will do is when I do the stitches, I won't do them the same length to keep going like that. I will make these few corners a little bit longer like that. And then here, when I do the um, increase, or I will put two um, of the stitches, we will make them longer. And then when we're on this stitch, we will just make it a normal size, just to make it even. And then we can start working in rows. But let me show you. I think this is how it works best and you end up with this beautiful edging. So here you can see I end it up and then start doing one, two, three, four, five, six rows. Okay. So here I'll do one more and I'll just straighten it up. So we want to work it in this edge So we are very near to, as you can see in a moment, where we are going to nearly work this, um, where we connected both of the threads. So we need to make sure this is the same length before this we work it in. So now, so here we will do a double, but can you see what I'm doing? I'm going to make it longer. And now I'll make this even longer because what we'll do we will work this edge back. So now this is the second one. So if you roughly say that we will work there. Can you see how the distance is a little bit longer? But by doing that, we are going to straighten this corner to make it from oval to nice and straight. 
So I actually will do a third one there. Can you see? And now we'll start going horizontally. So here we'll match the length where we would like the actual row to go. So now I will speed up this area and just before I finish the corner, I'll come back to show you again. approach this last corner so here we will do a little increase we'll do one more in this corner and oh I forgot to mention it depends on the size of the shoes you can have more um, stitches the middle stitches the chain for example could be more than four stitches for me it's the same thing you just many uh, try and get it separated get the middle and check how many stitches you will need so here it may be different stitches but you do it just follow the curves actually so now we want this bit to straighten can you see it so we will keep going up to here so now we're going to work in this one we we'll go down this corner and again when the shoes are used everything will be nice and pressed down so you won't notice anything so here we'll do one more but then i'll just do it a little bit lower so you may feel that your hands may ache a little bit we've been doing this uh, hour and 45 minutes you can do it quicker but I like it nicer. I prefer it to be slower, but nicely crafted. And we are talking now per shoes rather than for pair. So now uh, you can see how nicely we follow the edges. And now we need to do this bit. So we will still follow the second plate and we will work from edge to edge in rows. So what I'll do, let's see how it goes with the curvy one, but here I felt that it was easier with the straight needle. I will leave this for the moment being, because we may be able to use it if this is not enough. If not, we'll cut it, but use it for now. So to continue now to work the rows, this is where we finish. We'll just go here underneath the first stitch just to hide it and then roughly we'll do this uh, height rows so we'll just push into the pleat like that I think I'll change it to the straight Okay, let me change it to the straight needle. And now we will go down this end. 
and we will do the end of this plea. This one is really hard here. I think it will be much easier if you use one of these pliers to save your hands. Okay, so when we have this, don't do it very tight and just leave it a little bit loose. So this thread will play the same role as this one. So we can, we don't see much gaps, but it's all filled nicely. So I will start from this stitch at the end. And I will just do that. Actually, I'll do it this way. I won't go over. So when we're here like that, then we hold and then we'll go back in again to do the edge. Oh, actually, make sure your thumb is away because you can easily poke your thumb and it's not fun. So we do exactly what we did. Just keep working around. Keep your thumb in a distance. And again, we go through. The only difference here, we do exactly everything the same, but we do not increase because now we're kind of going in the um, just plain rows, we don't do curves. I will meet you at the end here to show you once more and then I'll speed everything else up. See you shortly. We're just approaching the end of this row. So I'll show you once more. Here the last one. We nicely finished it, so I'll just go a little bit under and just go another row distance. This is too much, somewhere there. So you can see how we secure this row. And now we bring it across what we did earlier and we will do it from this end. So roughly wherever we want to put it, it will be somewhere there. Oh, these pleats could be very difficult. Oops, They're very stiff I find them because they're folded. And again, we'll do the first one here. We leave the cotton this side. 
and then we start so you can you see how nice edge we make here so and then we continue we can start from here again so this one needs to be a little bit loose now we need to push it through don't want my thumb to go Okay. Oops, we tighten it too much. Okay. And then we continue with the rest of the stitches. So I will meet you either at the end. I think I will have to put new um, thread. Um, and if I have to put a new thread, I will stop and show you how I do it. We'll speed up the rest as well. Okay, so now we we can't work anymore with this thread. I'll show you what we'll do to secure it. And if this happens anywhere in this place, you you would have done the same thing. So now I just to secure it here as at the edge of the row and then we'll just go through this little stitches and we will hide that keep it in this row And this will be enough you don't need to weave it in out oh this will be squashed nicely so the reason i said we can leave this one is for example now this will be we'll do one more row and i think we will struggle for the last row it will be uncomfortable to put the the needle and actually now i will go back to the curve needle because it's getting quite difficult to pull this through but what i'll do i'll do the same thing but from the side just try and weave this until the bottom we already have nice edges so we'll just go from here just to bring it further down just wherever you can see gaps but 
but we are very near the end of darning our first shoe. If you haven't watched or if you need to know how to sew these ribbons, after this tutorial you can go and watch. We'll put it up there so you can see how to sew it again nice and neat so you don't even realize that it has been sewn. Okay, so we brought the thread here. We need to do exactly the same thing. Just one more row. row. And then we'll see. We will fill the other gap differently. So this will be our spirit up. This will be exactly the same thing, but we are going to do it with a curving needle because it is too near the leather sole. It will be uh, nearly impossible with the other needle. So exactly what we did earlier. But because the needle is curved, it's much easier. Okay, see you at the end. Okay, so you can finish it like that if you want it, but I'm going to try and fit either one or two chain stitch so I can finish the gap. Look how pretty it is. Nice and neat. This is what I did and I, I put one row of chains. There is a little tiny gap left, but again, it's not a problem. I'll see if I can fill this gap as my daughter did not like the gap. Um, so I'll show you now what you could do. If you don't want to do anything else, just weave this through and you're done. But I will do. I do, I must admit, this is the most difficult part and it is nearly. Well, it's two and a half hours with all explanation and stopping. Um, so it's not a quick job and it is per shoe. But when you see this absolutely lovely end result, it's worth it. So we just do it this way. if you can see yes it's very difficult here and hard I don't want to lift it up so to do the chain you go back in here early on because I had another thread I wanted to grab it as well this is normally how we do So I've done two chains, I will continue and then I'll go back and this is how, you know when you see it how nicely it stays, but again this is, I find it difficult. We are nearly 
there. Thank you. I'll have one more chain. Okay. And this was also the site where if it's not enough we can add some more at this end but hopefully we don't need to do anything else. The reason I made this video is just to help, as you know, I like helping and showing other people different, easy, let's say easier way. I appreciate it. Some people may not have any background of sewing, but when they see how things are done, hopefully it will help them do the shoes themselves. So now can you see there is a little gap, I will try to fill this gap as well. I think this one is very difficult here. Please, the bigger gap. I will appreciate your comments, your likes, your shares. If you know anyone who is struggling and is not sure how to do that, just um share this video we are near the end nearly two more stitches and we are done Okay, so now we need to secure this and we are done. Just pop it there. Then go through here probably. It doesn't matter as long as it is tucked in. For me, the most rewarding thing is when we complete the job nice, nicely and mess free and nice and tight. Look how tidy this look. It's absolutely gorgeous. Look at it. So congratulations, you have done your first point shoe. Look how beautiful they are. Yes, this is a hand work. Some of these, some of the stitches may be bigger or smaller. It doesn't matter as long as it looks good on the shoes and it does what it's supposed to do. This is what's matter. Thank you for watching. <laughs>